There's a saying in the video game world that goes like this. I wish I never played The Witcher 3 because now I cannot enjoy any other game. I can never relate to a saying as much as this one. No game can compete with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And there's probably never going to be one looking at the state of the industry nowadays. When I first bought my PS4, this was the game I wanted to get first and foremost. The shop I went to had an offer where you can get two games for the same price, but only for older titles. So when I asked for The Witcher 3, it told me, Nah, my brother, it ain't applied to the offer. And without a second thought, I said, Give it to me, I don't care. I went home that day with a console and one game, and what a game that was. That summer I went to my grandma's house and I let my cousin play with the PS4 since he has never tried one. He has always hated RPGs. He tried Skyrim and tried a bunch of games, but as soon as he started playing The Witcher, I would then not touch my console again for another two weeks. I went home that summer and never left my house again until I finished the game with a whopping 230 hours or so spent on it. I had explored every nook and cranny, done every quest, side or main, and much more. Now I will spend not enough time talking about it. The game's soundtrack will be playing in the background throughout the video, and if you are a fan of games such as the Elder Scrolls series, Soul series, Dragon Age series, or shows such as Game of Thrones, Vikings, Spartacus, then focus up. The Witcher was originally a book series by Polish writer Andrzej Sapkowski. Then, CD Projekt Red got the rights from him for only $9,500 and adapted his books into a trilogy of video games. However, he had always felt pessimism towards the games as in an interview with Eurogamer, Sapkowski said, CD Projekt Red initially offered them a percentage of The Witcher game's profits, but he refused instead preferring a lump sum up front. He thought there would be no profits and expected nothing more out of the adaptation than a big bag of money. He goes on to say that he just doesn't think video games can tell good stories. But holy shit was he wrong. The first game, simply called The Witcher, was developed by only 15 people at TD Projekt Red. It was released in 2007 and went on to sell 300,000 copies in a year meaning a revenue of almost $1.2 million. The second game had a fancier name, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. It was released in 2011 and sold a whopping 1.7 million copies, meaning about $68 million. And for the man of the show, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, it was developed by CD Projekt Red again, who by now had fame and money on their hands. With about 1,500 people involved in the production globally, by May 2015, they already had 1.5 million pre-orders in the bag, which is almost equal to the sales of The Witcher 2 after a year minus the sales of The Witcher 1 after a year. All of that and the game was not released yet. The game then got released on the 17th to overwhelmingly positive reception. After a year, it had sold over 10 million copies accumulative to $600 million in revenue. Now, the game sits at number one on Metacritic as the best game of all time on PC based on user reviews. Followed by the game's own DLC. How mind-blowing is that? By 2018, it had won over 800 awards, including Game of the Year. And the winner for Game of the Year 2015 is The Witcher 3. The Witcher
Witcher 3 wins a total of three awards tonight, including Best Role-Playing Game, Developer of the Year, and Game of the Year. Let me start with a quote uh, from our game by Charles Dance. After all these years, which you probably remember from our trailer, uh, I'd like to thank the team. I already did that. You are the best studio, and you already got an award for that. And uh, I'd like to thank gamers, because uh, we started in 2002 uh, with the dream of making an RPG with mature story, uh, highly non-linear, and nobody believed that. After five years, we released Witcher 1, PC only, uh, great fan support, then Witcher 2, and this award is for all these three Witchers and all of your hard work. Thank you very much. The main protagonist is one bound to instill fear in anyone who only looks him in the eye. Geralt of Rivia is a witcher of the school of the wolf. I cannot introduce him better than the game's magnificent intro can, so I will let badass the voice man speak now. I see you gather before me, hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breast. Emperor Emir has marched his legions into our lands, laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rabid and ravenous, he bites and bites away. Men of the North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. And yet you do not plead. You do not kneel to dust your heads with ash. Instead, you wail, why have the gods forsaken us? We must look into the trials we failed long ago. In a time past, our world intertwined with another through an upheaval scholars call the conjunction of the spheres. The gods allowed unholy forces to slip into our domain. The offspring of that cataclysm was the nefarious force called magic. Yet we did not banish it, instead studying the vile arcane for our own power and wealth. And the monsters at our door, the unholy relics of this conjunction, the trolls, the corpse eaters, the werewolves, did we raise our swords against them? Or have we laid this burden on others? On so-called witches. Stray children taught the ways of foul sorcery. Their bodies mutated through blasphemous ritual. Sent to fight monsters, though they could not distinguish good from evil. The flicker of humanity long extinguished within them. <laughs> yes, their numbers have dwindled through the years. But a few still roam our lands, offering their bloody work for coin. To this day they shame us with their very existence. The North bleeds! Flogged by war! The battles are the gods' whip, chastisement for our sins. And let us not forget the terrors, the scourges from beyond our world. The wild hunt rides the sky with every full moon. The Dark Raiders abduct our children into lands unknown. Some say they herald a second conjunction. Can we chart a course back into the light? Will we find the strength to banish the mages from our kingdoms? Unite around the warmth of the eternal fire. Nigh is the time of the sword and axe. None will fight this war in our stead. Nigh! It's the time of madness and disdain. You see, even if Geralt has no feelings, his wisdom is what makes him distinguish right from wrong. 
There is a reason why we're playing as Geralt and not some other random witcher. While he would not like to admit it, Geralt does not do his work only for gold. He does not accept every notice and every contract without contemplating it. He is a true detective. His witcher senses along with his humming medallion allow him to detect scents, footprints, blood stains, and detect magic. Sometimes in places where you would at least expect it. Now the reason why I prefer video games is that you are the one with the choice. You can make Geralt as evil or as good as you want him to be. In a quest called Carnal Sins, Geralt goes to save Sweet Nettie, a prostitute working in a brothel called Crippled Kate's. He finds her on the top floor being tortured by a man called Reverend Nathaniel. Geralt is looking for him because he thinks he is a serial killer roaming around Novigrad. But as it turns out, he is not. Thus, you are left with a choice of killing him or letting him go. No one will hear you, bitch. Not a soul. You though, whole town will hear you in a minute. Yet again you disturb me, and I so dislike being disturbed. I was to play with sweet Nettie, render her not so sweet, but I shall see to you first. First, gotta tell me why you do it. For pleasure. Satisfaction. <coughs> Achievable with whores in a lot of ways, many traditional. Doesn't take killing them, trust me. Who said anything about killing? I could stop at a few burns. Third degree, but still. Mm, this rosy skin will roast quite well. Just can't listen to any more of this shit. No one's forcing you to, mutant. You're free now. If not for you! He asked if I did everything and I said, for the right price of course. And then he smiled. Oh God, it came with you shivers. And then he hit me. So hard I passed out. I was bound when I came to. And he was here to poke her in the fire. <laughs> Calm down. He won't hurt you anymore. He won't hurt anyone. Geralt's strongest belief is that there isn't a lesser evil. Instead, evil is evil. Killing Renfri is the lesser evil. Evil is evil, Stragomor. Lesser. Greater. Middling. It's all the same. I'm not judging you. I haven't only done good in my life either. But now, if I have to choose between one evil and another, then I prefer not to choose at all. The reason why Geralt seems to always have the right mindset, even though most people call him a freak, is due to his reasoning that the real monsters of the world are humans. Another purpose of him carrying two swords just for that special occasion. Hendrik. What do you want with him? Wanna talk to him. What about? Give me a bottle of something strong. You gotta go. I'll open the back way for you. Got company. Who is it? Incape! Vodka! Who's this? Uh? Brave warrior, looks like. Got two swords, see? Oi! Great boy! What's the point of having two swords? Wonder if he keeps an extra prick in his trousers too. You fucking deaf. Gonna say who you are? Or do I need to loosen your tongue with me knife? I 
I'm a witcher. Heard you wondering about my swords. Well, one's for monsters, the other for humans. Only got one prick, though, in case you're wondering about that, too. Don't touch him. Don't even look at him. Worse than lepers, that lot. Saw one in action once. Killed a half dozen. Blood everywhere. Freak didn't even show a drop of sweat. Got the stench of corpses on him. Geralt is up there with the most badass video game characters ever made, such as Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. Hey boy! <laughs> hey boy, your mom's a whore, little boy. Be quiet, Mr. Dockery. Oh, your mom's a whore, that's a goddamn fact. Hey, anybody want to get lucky tonight? Go home here with Archie. <laughs> Be quiet, please! Oh boy, come on, we're just teasing. There's nothing wrong with being a whore. Can she get me a discount? <laughs> I'm just joking. I wouldn't touch his mama with a 10-foot pole. She's repellent. Ooh, you gonna hit me now? Ooh, he's gonna hit me now. If you're gonna hit me, it's on, you little maggot. That's enough. Why don't you shut up? Oh, oh, all right. oh. Who's this, your daddy? My daddy died, and this man, he killed him. What are you doing here? Leave the boy alone. Why'd you kill his daddy? You after his mama? <laughs> Stop bullying the boy. Get out of my business, mister. Leave the boy alone. Or what? Or I'll kill you too. You couldn't kill no one. Look at you, all ragged and sick and weak. Clear off, you goddamn hermit. Clear off! You and the horse son here. Can't even fight your own boot. Can't even fight your own boot. Now who's next? Let the boy go. Let him go. Come on, me. Shame on you. He's just a goddamn boy. Get you out of here. They're gonna kill me. Now I got no job and they're gonna kill me. I've got some money. You and your mama can go someplace nice. Well, why are you doing this? I don't know. Listen, take this, all of it. Try and talk to your mama and get out of here. Now run. I'll try. Good boy. I don't want to see you here again. And Kratos from God of War. Beneath it all, Geralt is a sweet muffin. Ooh. It's me, Millie! Remember me? Of Course I do. I... I have a gift for you. Cause... Mummy always said, if someone's nice, you gotta thank them. If only more people believed that. I best be going. Auntie says I'm not to stray far from home. Wise words. Be careful. And thanks for the gift. For a man who claims he didn't left feel emotion, he sure has a heart. But what drives him to do what he does though? Well, the White Wolf is searching for his missing adopted daughter, Cyrilla Fiona Ellen Rianon, or just Siri. He's kind of adopted this uh, young girl named Siri. Child Wait, there's a girl named Siri? Yeah. <laughs> is she the same one that tells you information on the iPhone? Uh, I don't think so. I was sure there's not a tie-in? <laughs> it's very suspicious to me that the Witcher befriends someone who happens to be the voice of the iPhone. <laughs> and he does it with his pet crow, Google. <laughs> she possesses the power of the Elder Blood allowing her to manipulate time and teleport through worlds. You are then invited to meet the King of Nilfgaard. He's the Emperor of Nilfgaard, is what you need to know. <laughs> didn't, you didn't just say he's the Emperor of Nilfgaard, did you? Well, yeah, I mean, that's his proper title. Okay. <laughs> I'm the Emperor of Nilfgaard, if you know what I mean. Oh, 
Sir, the Emperor of Nilfgaard. You've got to stop talking. Okay. King Emir Var Emirates, who is Ciri's true father. She escaped from him as a kid only to be found by Geralt, who is now appointed a quest to find her once again by King Emir. Who, by the way, is played by Charles King, aka Tywin fucking Lannister from Game of Thrones. I mean, just listen to that voice, man. You're insolent because you believe I cannot afford to hurt you. Can you explain this? Are you my foe? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that one here. Mm -hmm. This is my first video game that I have performed in. It's a whole new world for me. It's quite exciting, actually. I shall say this once. Stop. My character is... He's a very, very powerful man. Probably the most powerful man. And as such, he doesn't need to throw his weight around. He's a man of few words. The words he speaks speak volumes. And he's ruthless. He's ruthless because he has to be. My patience has its limits. Do not test them. She's in danger. You must find her. And when I do, what then? I shall give her what she deserves. The whole rise in the popularity of fantasy now is quite extraordinary, really. It's no longer the realm of children's entertainment. It is real. So the whole thing now appeals to quite discerning adults because the special effects are so real. The worlds that are created are so believable, but it also employs the most wonderful cinematic techniques. What I saw of video games ten years ago I made mean, us like a whole other world. Throughout the main story, you will be able to play as her for a couple of quests, and you will watch her get progressively more powerful. I'm looking for an ashen-haired woman, is a phrase you will hear Geralt utter numerous times throughout your playthrough, as she is not only missing, but being hunted by the Wild Hunt, a horrifying group of spectres, similar to the Nazgul from the Lord of the Rings and the Dementors from Harry Potter. They consist of four main members, Imlarith, Caranthir, Nithral, and the King of the Wild Hunt, Eredin. Since they need Ciri's power to facilitate transportation of their entire army from their world to the Witcher's unnamed world, the Wild Hunt are the main villains of the game and will fight each one of them one by one, as each one of them needs a ton of preparation. Sadly, this game does not have enough sex scenes. Anyway, the game does have a love triangle of sorts. The two prevalent side characters are the sorceresses, Chris Marigold and Yennefer of Vengerbert. You can romance one of them or both at the same time if you are into that sort of thing. However, the outcome is not as good as you might hope it is, you sick fuck. What about me? Don't I get any? 
You just got exactly what you deserve. Hey, this isn't funny. <clears throat> Come back. Triss, yes. There's a shit ton of monsters to fight here, as seen by the bestiary. A guide to killing monsters the most convenient way. Each time you kill a new creature, it will be added to your bestiary, where you can read the additional history on it and learn its weaknesses. I remember playing it for the first time with being so terrified by the sight of a noon wraith that I had to stop playing and come back later like a pussy. Now how do you actually fight these monsters? Well just like I mentioned before, if they are a human or a beast, such as a wolf or a bear, well then pull out your steel sword. If it's a creature, such as a vampire or a necrophage, then get your silver sword ready. And if the enemy is in the air or underwater, then use your crossbow. You also have adrenaline points that you can consume when parrying or rolling. The combat does not sound that in depth at first, if anything, it's just a hack and slash. However, beneath it all is a bunch of detailed systems. First, you have the alchemy and the crafting, where you can make potions that give you various boosts, or make new swords and master crafted armor. Second, you have the abilities system, where each time you level up, you spend points on different new skills. And third, you can craft oils that you can put on your sword when battling to deal extra damage to that specific type of creature. Finally and most importantly, signs. Witchers can cast signs in the form of spells. The Butcher of Blaviken does a hand sign each time he wants to use a specific spell. There are five of them. Igni deals fire damage, Axi dazes the enemy and makes them fight alongside you. Yurden slows down enemy movement and makes wraiths hittable. Quen gives you a shield that absorbs incoming damage. Art pushes enemies back and knocks them on the floor sometimes. There is a lot of variation and combinations you can pull off and trust me, the game gets tough so make use of all your resources. How can we not talk about Gwent, my real addiction inside The Witcher 3. Gwent is a trading card minigame inside an already rich in content game. From the beginning you are introduced to the rules and begin collecting cards. It is fairly easy but tough to master and once you start, you can never stop. There are four different decks each representing familiar characters from the game's vast world, not to mention the sick tracks behind it. Each vendor in the game can be challenged, or more special characters give you special cards. Thank you for coming. Since the game is heavy on choice, depending on what you do, you can have one of 36 different fucking endings, which I will clearly not be going through to avoid spoilers. 
Just know that your end goal is to gather as many powerful people as you can to make an army to then defeat the wild hunt. All of that, I will not even go in depth about the DLCs, aka downloadable content yet. Expansions like Blood and Wine have more content and polish than most AAA games out nowadays, and the only expansion to ever win a full game of the year. If that still is not enough, you can download custom mods to the game to make the experience anything you'd want. Take a look at how stunning this is. For those who are still not interested in playing a video game, then a TV show is the perfect remedy. When Netflix released The Witcher Season 1 on December 20, 2019, it quickly rose to fame and became the number one most watched first season of a show at the time. It then got beaten by Bridgerton and Squid Game. The TV show is more canon to the books and thus removes the additional sword from Geralt's back. Geralt is now played by the Man of Steel himself, Henry Cavill. Luckily, the show was everything the fans wanted and was a great introduction to the beginning of Geralt's story. And there is much more to come and I cannot wait. I mean, just look at that cinematography. And of course, the great relationship between Geralt and Yaskier. And destiny, heroics and heartbreak. It's Onion. 
This is the part where we escape. This is the part where they kill us. Oh, Geralt, thank the gods. I might live to see another day. We need to go. Yes, Gail, you're okay. Geralt? Geralt, where, where are you going? Geralt, don't leave me. Hello? He could die. <gasps> Fuck, Geralt. <laughs> yeah, we won't let that happen. What are we looking for again? Blessed silence. Yeah, I don't really go in for that. It's just the embodiment of the soul's desire to grow. Did you sing to her before she left? I did, actually, and she... Why? What are you implying? Why are you dressed like a sad silk trader? What? Yes, Gia. Aren't you just the cutest, most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my entire life? Like, run away, run away, Geralt! Triumphant performance! The old man might have mentioned that the road was too narrow for horses and his initial sales pitch. Welcome to the world, yes, here. Leave the very sexy but insane witch to her inevitable demise! She saved your life, yes, here. I can't let her die. Stay. How are you doing, I hear you ask? I didn't. Well, the Countess de Stael, my muse and beauty of this world, has left me again, rather coldly and unexpectedly, I might add. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Sit here a while longer? So we shall, my friend. We have witnessed, and in fact on several occasions incited, many great and weighty events. After all that toil, I believe we deserve a bit of a rest. That we do.